So I still remember the first time that I held my daughters when they were first born. So Nick Freitas is one of those men that has lived a lot of life before me, before potentially you and me, and has a wealth of knowledge to give. Nick was a former Green Beret. He has a lot of opinions to share, and he's one of those guys, especially around fatherhood, that I truly look up to and try to emulate. He recently posted this video all about daughters, how to not raise daughters with daddy issues, and a lot of different things. I thought that I would react to this video and give my perspective having a much younger daughter and being a little bit earlier in on this fatherhood thing than he is with daughters that are now out of the house, so that maybe you and I can learn a little bit more from it and continue to be better dads together from here. So let's jump straight into his six tips that he's talking about for his daughter right now. You need to tell your daughter that you love her, right? now. Inevitably, whenever I talk about this and, and other content, people will always come in and feel duty bound to remind me that well, you also have to show her. Yeah, I know that, right? So telling your daughter that you love her, obviously that's very important, especially from his perspective, raising daughters um, from obviously a very young age to now being out of the house and even married. I've got a three-year-old, her name is Allegra. She turned three in April, and she is the youngest of our three children, two boys above her. And she is one of those things that she just steals your heart every single day. And telling her that I love her is a very easy thing to do because I truly do. And having read a lot of books um, and gone through a lot of research to try to get some content out specifically for you, I've really looked at this notion of how to tell your daughter that you love her and how beneficial that is. When we're really looking at this and talking about it, and Nick talks about this in his video, and you should absolutely watch the whole thing, is when you look at the broken women in our society today, a lot of them have what are you know typically called daddy issues, right? Um, they are easily taken advantage of by other men, and they are easily broken down by society and peer groups and social media and things like that. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that they simply are looking for both affection and affirmation by men in their life. And if their father didn't fill that for them, some other man will and some other force will. So by affirming with your daughter and telling her that you love her every chance that you get, being truly sincere about it, that will help to build up that self-esteem in her so that she can be a much better person and much more um, proud of who she is and not thus allow other men to take advantage of her. You know, with, with my daughter in particular, especially now, um, a, a story that I'm seeing play out every single day is at nighttime. You know, we go through the process of bedtime and I love the moment that she and I get together as I'm putting her to bed, as I'm tucking her sheet in, I always ask her how her day was and I always tell her how much I love her and how much I appreciate the person that she is, even at three years old. And I always see this beaming smile on her face and how incredibly happy she is to know that there is a dad sitting there in front of her that truly loves her. Again, she's three, so I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna play out, but I'm confident that that is paying off and paying dividends in terms of her self-esteem being built one little step at a time. So something that I absolutely love to, um, to see and I'm working on and will continue to do so. So that's the good first point. Let's jump onto the second point with Nick right now. Number two, believe it or not, it's also I love you, but this time you're saying it to her mom. You should love your wife, right? And, and hopefully you've married a, a good woman uh, <laughs> so that saying I love you uh, is, is very, very natural. But the reason why I say your daughter needs to see you saying I love you to your wife is because obviously the Yeah, saying I love you obviously to your kids is pretty easy to do, right? Um, and we fall into this trap and this is something again that I've really started to have a profound appreciation for recently is the trap of being the friend to our children, right? So our kids are so fantastic to be around. We really enjoy it. We do our work all day long. We have the burden on our shoulders. We come home, especially if we have boys, all we wanna do is play with them, roughhouse with them and do those things. That can be a bit of a challenge though because if you're only a friend to your children and you're not necessarily having an appreciation specifically for your wife in the relationship that you had prior to having kids, 
that relationship's going to degrade a little bit and now you will be just another child for your wife to manage. And that's not the way to go about raising children and that's certainly not a way to go about having a marriage and a relationship. So this is such a great point um, and there's multitude, three different things that I kind of wanna appreciate and talk about with you here. First is when you have arguments with your wife and you absolutely will, and they happen in front of your children because they're always around, right? Taking the opportunity to talk with your kids and your daughter and things like that, especially after the fight to say, listen, that happens. That was a reality of the situation and I apologize for that and I'm going to do better. But more importantly is apologizing to your wife in front of the kids so that they can see that you two have a relationship, that challenges come up, they happen, but they don't just see the fight part of it and then nothing come after the fact. They just think that there's the fights and there's never a resolution, right? They see the, the argument and then they see the resolution at some point thereafter, they will get an appreciation for this is how a relationship works. From a daughter's perspective, they will see that this is how a man, this is how the man that she ends up with should act is being um, uh, appreciative of there is an argument, but they come back around and there is an apology and there's a reconciliation, then she'll expect that of the other men in her life. So that's one super important part. But um, focusing on your wife um, just like it was before your parents is the second component that I wanna talk about here, right? Think about the day that you met your wife, your first date, first kiss, when you got married. Think about how infatuated you are with her, and then now think about where you are now that you have one, two, three kids. Has that changed? I think the answer probably would be yes, and if it is not, put in the comments below what you're doing because I would love to learn from you as well. But if you can focus on your wife and the relationship that you have with each other prior to kids and try to continue that relationship, that will showcase to your kids that this is the most important thing. So by the fact of coming home, asking your wife how her day was, focusing on her, getting her tea in the morning, and making sure that she is loved and valued, that nucleus of the relationship of the nuclear family that you've built the two of you will matriculate by osmosis down to your kids and they will be better children and better young adults and better adults as a result of that because they have this great model to look up to. You know, I just um, saw a great clip from Tucker Carlson actually, where he was talking about if you have the opportunity to watch your kids at a sporting event or go to dinner with your wife, choose dinner with your wife. It will pay dividends far and away more than it will going to see your kid at a sporting event. And what he means by that is cultivating, expanding upon, benefiting the relationship with your wife whenever possible will make you both better parents for your children moving forward. So say I love you, say it to your wife first. I love that um, and definitely want to continue to do that. So let's move forward. Let's see what else Nick has to say in his third tip. It's okay, right? It's okay to show that, that tenderness with them. I remember a time not so long ago where I was at a daddy-daughter dance with both my girls, but was kind of impacting me about it very specifically this time is that I'm about to walk my oldest daughter down the aisle. And as we're at this daddy-daughter dance, I looked at her and I said, well... Tenderness. Tenderness is such an interesting point and he really brings up in the story that he tells in this video is profound. Um, I'll let you go and listen to it yourself. But from my perspective, especially with the three-year-old daughter, showing that tenderness to her is very unique and different. Having had the two boys and being so rough with them and roughhousing and having a lot of fun with them is just such a fun opportunity. But it's so different with my daughter and I absolutely love that. It just showcases the profound difference between boys and girls. So, you know, a good example is we have a pool that's kind of across the street in our neighborhood and we go to the pool all the time and my two boys love to be thrown in. Any chance they get, they want me to toss them as high, as far, as deep as I can in the water, make them as big a splashes as possible. But with my daughter, I'm a lot more careful just to toss her in gently, right? And for whatever reason, having the tenderness to be able to showcase that is important, but then it expands even further. So when my two boys fall and skin their knees when they're running at the pool when they're not supposed to, I pretty much don't have much sympathy for them. They know they're not supposed to run. I know that they're bleeding from the knees, but I know they're also strong and I have taught them 
and try to instill in them that they can handle more pain and they are bigger and stronger than their sister and um, than other women and that they need to um, internalize some of that. So I don't give them as much of the tenderness when they get those skin knees simply because that's kind of what I'm trying to instill into them. When Allegra falls and skins her knee, it's a totally different story. I guess I'm a softie at heart, right? But she comes to me, she immediately wraps her arms around me, crying tears and taking the opportunity to really one, enjoy that moment, and two, give her some of the tenderness that I don't necessarily showcase as a man that I do with the boys, so she can see that I do have a bit of a softer side, so that she knows, in particular, that she can come to me with her challenges, with her problems, with her pains, and know that I will have a tender ear for her to listen. So that's a super important part and um, definitely something that I'm trying to continue to do. She makes it easy though, because she's so darn cute. Okay, let's get on to the next one. Next one is, uh, believe it or not, silliness. And I think this one actually comes a little bit easier to dads. Um, as you get a little bit older in this dad gig, uh, you like the dad jokes and things like that, but it's also, it's also spending that time, especially with your little girls, doing things that are silly. So fun. This one I don't have a problem with either. Um, it definitely comes and stems from being with the two boys. Um, you know, one story that I think about a lot of times when we're talking about the silliness is we live here in Colorado. So we're about two, two and a half hours from the ski resorts um, up in the uh, central part of the Rockies. So we try to go as many times as possible. Everybody has their ski pass. We've gotten all of the kids on skis really fast. And with Allegra in particular, you know, she didn't take to it quite as um, actively as the boys did. So I have this little harness that goes around her chest and she has these little teeny ski boots and little teeny skis. And we try to ski down um, the, the path itself. Initially, she was not having it all. Um, and so what can I do to make this little two-year-old girl enjoy the fact that she's skiing? Well, silliness is the first thing. Snacks first, waters, and then silliness. Jumping in with silly jokes and skiing down and actually telling jokes back and forth to each other. We would tell jokes and the boys would tell jokes to her all the time at dinner. So we tell those same jokes together while we're skiing down the run, having a lot of fun doing that. Um, and we sing Paw Patrol songs, right? All those little silly things to get her to have an appreciation for the fun that she's having but also to realize that the things that she's doing that make her nervous, that might be dangerous, that are scary, um, you bring a little levity to that, it gives her some confidence in herself to be able to do the harder things by inserting some of that silliness into it. So um, absolutely a great point. And having that silliness with the kiddo, I think you and I are going to be just fine in that realm. Let's jump to the next one. Uh, serious, don't break, but um bend for them occasionally. Uh, I, I wouldn't consider myself a strict parent, but we definitely... Don't break a bend. His story in this one is also really great. Um, but from my perspective, again, with the three-year-old, there's a lot that you have to be pretty direct with, with her in particular, to get her to do what you need her to do. But it's kind of interesting too, because I've at least in this stage of her life, if I get stern, if I raise my voice, if I try to um, make it very serious that she needs to do something, put her in timeout, whatever it may be, she will appreciate, she'll listen, and she'll get that appreciation for that. But at the same time, I don't necessarily have to be hard all the time. And bedtime is one of those times that is such a fun challenge these days now. And it is driving me crazy. But at the same time, she is so much fun to be around. So this is kind of where I bend and not necessarily break a little bit more with her. Bedtime, as I'm sure you can appreciate, is always the challenge with your kiddos. It's crazy, um, but Allegra in particular now um, has to have multitudes worth of hugs and kisses and the I love you talk um, throughout that 20, 30 minute period. It starts with bathroom, it starts and continues with brushing teeth, and then when we finally get that book read and get her into bed, I give her that hug, I tuck her in, I slowly get ready to walk away and she's immediately calling out, oh, I need one more, one more hug, one more kiss. Okay, I'll give you one more. And then I go back and then this continues easily three, four, five more times to the point where I'm actually finally out the door and then of course comes back again and wants another hug and another kiss. That's one of those things where, you know, I, I could be hard nosed, I could tell her, listen, this is enough. 
But at the same time, I know that I'm not gonna get these times and these days back with her. There's only so many seasons in life. She's three years old, which means we have maybe 15 seasons left with her. So if I take the extra time, I get those extra snuggles from her, I bend those rules just a little bit, it's worth it to both showcase our relationship together and to get that quality time with her. So it's worth it. But bending, not breaking, I'm all for it. Let's jump to the next one. Your, uh, your daughter needs counsel from her father. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of dads make this mistake where they think that there's certain things that the mom just handles that. And, and look, there are certain things that, yes, mom is far more suited to handle. Your daughter needs counsel from her father. This is such an interesting point. And, you know, um, I've made another video about what to talk about with your son. So if you want, you can check that link in the description for that video. I'll leave an end card for you too. But having counsel for your daughter, this is really where that nuclear family, that great relationship that you have with your daughter and with your wife will really come to pay fruit because she can have a lot of the difficult discussions with your daughter um, that go around, um, you know, especially as they get older, the girl things, right? But getting counsel from a father to a daughter is profound. And there are so many fatherless homes in society today where that daughter especially doesn't get that input, doesn't get that guidance from her father that it really causes challenges. So, you know, um, I, I think about my boys in particular when they are really annoying her or when they are, um, you know, all over playing and doing things on their own and she feels left out. For me to sit her down on my lap and give her the counsel of, here's why the boys are doing what they're doing, here's why it was or wasn't nice, and just to kind of give her an appreciation for, from my dad perspective, here's why you feel the way you do and here's why it's okay to feel that way that's such a great opportunity one again to build that relationship consolidate that relationship and two, give her the guidance from another perspective outside of her mother um, that will really help for them to um, continue to grow so having that wise counsel is going to be so incredibly important for my daughter in particular and being there for her to give her that advice, even if you feel like it's not your place to give it, give it from your perspective so she can have it, she can internalize it, and she can move forward with life. So one other thing that I've got that I've talked a little bit about is you know, my five core virtues as a father, as a husband, and as a man. Um, I've really tried over these last few years to kind of change the way that I approach being all of those things, and it really takes five specific things. Um, and what I've done is I put that together into a one-page document that is basically my five core virtues, and it's something that could be a reference for you so that you can kind of dial in what are the, some of the core virtues that you want to live by that you could facilitate in your life that will help to one-up where you are both professionally as a husband and as a father so you can continue to do more. If that sounds like it might be something interesting to you, I've got a link in the description. You can download it completely for free. I'll send that over to you so you could help to um, you know, at least get an appreciation of what the virtues that I live by are and you can take those and you can run with it and continue from there. So if that's something you're interested in, link in the description below and I'll talk to you on that a little bit later. All right, let's get on to the last one. Don't always threaten to kill her boyfriends. Um, <laughs> again, I didn't say never threaten to kill her boyfriends, but uh, don't always do it. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about before on making sure that your daughter knows that one day you do want her to be married and be happy. But yeah, this is such a good point. Um, obviously, my daughter's not dating. I will not be letting her date for quite some time. So that perspective obviously doesn't directly fit with where potentially you and I sit from being dads or if you're going to have a new baby soon that's going to be a girl. But the big thing that this brings about from my mind is your daughter needs to know that you are willing to go to bat to, for her to bring violence into the world to protect her and to do whatever it takes to be there for your daughter. If she has the appreciation for the fact that she can call you anytime, day or night, and know that you are going to be there for her, whether she's done something good, whether she's done something bad, that confidence will help to carry her so far in life to know that I've got my mom, she's fantastic, but I also have this man in my life who will do anything and everything for me 
to make sure that um, I am successful and safe, mostly safe. So having things like uh, ways to protect your family in the house, showing that masculinity, showing that physicality, being physically fit, doing the things that men do to protect their wives, their family, their children, showcase that. Let your daughter see that you are capable, as Nick Freda, uh, um, Freda says, capable of violence when necessary. Doesn't mean you're showing it all the time, but you are capable of it so that they know that you are there to protect them. That is one of the roles of a man. That's one that I highly um, covet in our family. And this is just another reason for that. So those are the seven components of this video from Nick that I think are absolutely profound. Again, take a look at his video. I'll link it down in the description. Check out all of his stuff. He's absolutely fantastic. What did I miss? What did he miss? What are things that you do for your daughter that you feel are really helping to raise her up in the world? Put those in the comments below. This is a community of dads, you and me, so we can continue to talk about the things that we are challenged with on a day-to-day -day basis, so we can continue to expand our professional, our financial, our fitness, our future with our children. So if you like this, subscribe. There's tons of content. There's a lot of great things that we talk about in here. Like the video if you're able. And as I said, if you wanna learn, or if you have sons, check out this video right here. This video talks specifically about what you can do and say to your kids in a similar vein for your boys instead of your girls. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for listening today. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.